Averill, and I'm joined by my partner Brandon Averill today. Disclaimer, Eric Averill and Brandon Averill are the co-founders of AWM Capital. Due to industry regulations, it's essential to explicitly state that investment or strategies mentioned on this podcast may not be suitable for you, and you should discuss your specific situation with a qualified, certified financial planner. All opinions expressed by podcast participants are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of AWM Capital or its affiliates. For more information, visit athleteceo.com. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Athlete CEO Podcast. I'm excited for our show today. We're taking a small break from interviewing an outside guest to reflect back over the past 19 episodes. This is episode 20, which is a great mile marker for us here at the Athlete CEO Podcast. And what we want to talk about today is the main theme that runs through all of our interviews and represents the name of this podcast which is the mentality of helping professional athletes start to think about themselves as their own business and as business owners. This is probably something that you guys have heard before, whether it's from your agent, your financial advisor, or really from a marketing perspective. And it was something when I heard that as an athlete, I didn't really understand. And very candidly for a lot of athletes that we talk to, it's they don't have much of an interest or, or a desire or passion to think about themselves from a, from a business standpoint. Sometimes it feels um, very salesy or markety or, or not authentic. But what I'm here to talk to you about is why no matter where you're at in your career or what your goals are, starting to at least think from an owner mentality is very important. And the first area where this is of crucial importance is your actual playing career. I think back to the episode uh, that we had with Eric Cressy, the leading strength and conditioning coach uh, on. And I had asked Eric, hey, what are a few of the biggest mistakes that you're seeing athletes make that you work with? And, you know, the first one that Eric addressed is during the off season, while my athletes come in and, and do get better in the gym, not many guys actually improve on the technical side. And so, you know, as a hitter or as a pitcher, have you actually gotten better at your craft? And I think of a good example on this end is Justin Turner of the Dodgers. It's uh, It's been covered widely in the media that, you know, his career looked like it was over when the New York Mets designated him for assignment. And Justin, you know, took it upon himself an ownership mentality to reinvent his swing. And now he's become a perennial all-star. And so I think you know, it's really important that we will talk about is having clarity of what your goals are so that you can enter into the off season, really trying to make an improvement on that. Because at the end of the day, you yourself are your biggest asset. That if you can improve your own career, whether it's through your health, whether it's through getting better at your specific craft, if you extend your career by just one year or multiple years, the amount of money that that brings you and your future family, that's the biggest return on investment that, that you can make. The second area that Eric addressed is, you know, during the season, a lot of athletes unfortunately stop strength training uh, at the intensity level that they should. And, and you see this fall off of performance kind of in the second half of their seasons. And, and I understand that's a difficult thing because being a former player, I know that organizations all have their specific mentalities and their approaches. And for them, it's more injury prevention than it is performance. And so as an athlete, a lot of times we'll hear this mentality that, hey, they don't really like me doing that. But once again, this goes to that ownership mentality of saying, you know what, you need to know what goals you're trying to accomplish, what you need to do and have the ownership to be able to push back against things that are preventing you from being successful. And so, you know, the first thing, it's a mindset mindset shift is taking that mentality from an amateur to a professional. And I think back to episode 15, where we interviewed Jeff Pearsall, who is a business owner himself, an entrepreneur, but he was an award-winning basketball coach. And Jeff talked about his mentor being coach John Wooden. And for those of you 
um, that need a refresh, refresher. Coach Wooden ran off 10 national titles at UCLA and was famously known for his pyramid of success, that he believed that if he could help his players develop certain characteristics and traits, that they would end up being successful as a team. And so I encourage all of you guys to go check out the pyramid of success and start to think through what are the building blocks that you need to put into place to help you be successful. The other resource that, that I highly encourage everybody to check out is High Performance Habits by Brendan Bouchard. And so really as a business owner, the first question you have to answer is, what are we trying to accomplish? What is our product? What is our service? What are our goals? And very much for the athlete and in your own individual businesses, seeking clarity on what you're trying to accomplish. A great question to answer that we ask of a lot of our clients is, I want you to imagine that ESPN is doing a 30 for 30 special on you. I want you to think through, what would they say about your career? What would they say about you as a family man? What would they say about you as a friend? How about your interaction and involvement in community? What's the blank, blank story? And so I think that those are good questions to wrestle with is take out a pen and a paper and start to journal and define what do you want your story to be? And that will give you a great place to start to have a conversation with your team, whether it's your agent, your financial advisor, your strength coach, your peak performance coach of, hey, this is where I wanna go. How do I put the plans in place to be able to execute that? And so first and foremost, start to shift that mentality to one of ownership. Now shifting to the business side of it, and for most of the individuals listening to this podcast, I know this is of interest to you. It's why you guys are listening in is, it is hard pressed to find a, a group of people like professional athletes who have more of an opportunity to leverage their current position into future growth. And a few examples that we see who are absolutely dominating this space is who I would consider kind of the pinnacle of this is Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, a few years back, it, uh, the news story broke that Shaquille O'Neal had actually sold 51% of the rights to his brand to a company called Authentic Brands Group. And it's been estimated that that transaction is gonna net Shaquille O'Neal close to 200, between 240 to $270 million. And that's why uh, we see Shaquille O'Neal still uh, promoting Icy Hot 10 years after his, his basketball career. And then today we're watching uh, one of the greatest basketball players, arguably the best ever uh, unfold this iconic career, but at the same time uh, is building a complete empire off the court. And so whether it's through his platform of uninterrupted, where he's provided a platform for other athletes to tell their stories or LeBron using his platforms for um, speaking out politically or philanthropically, what he's done for the state of Ohio in education is LeBron has really understood what it means to capture the attention of his audience and how to monetize that and how to leverage that for impact, um, both monetarily and just for, for overall good. The third name that comes to mind is, is Sean White. The famous snowboarder and skater is Sean has been able to, to leverage his success, um, you know, on the board and in the snow into really being an ambassador for the sport, uh, being able to purchase uh, ownership into Mammoth Mountain and Snow Summit where he grew up uh, within the sport and then starting his own clothing company. And from a philanthropic standpoint of just being able to promote the sport. And so, you know, there are just example after example of how you can leverage your current career into opportunities uh, post-career. And you might be listening to this being like, hey, Eric, that all sounds great, but you're talking about three of the most iconic athletes in their respective sport. Yeah, of course, it's easy for Shaquille or LeBron or in baseball, A-Rod or, or Sean White to put themselves in this position. But what if I'm not the best in my sport? And so I think it's a real question. 
But two more examples that I really would love to point you to is to show you that whether you have a, you know, a short stint in the minor leagues um, or you actually never make it onto, onto the field and maybe you're just on the practice squad is at any level you can leverage where you're at. And so um, I want to bring your attention to Lewis Howes. Lewis Howes is a former professional football player. Uh, he played in arena football, and so we're not even talking about uh, a big-time NFL player, no Pro Bowls. But Lewis, when he was going through his transition from being an athlete into the real world, you know, stumbled upon something called LinkedIn. And Lewis quickly realized the value of relationships and the power of sports. And so Lewis started connecting with people on LinkedIn and, and realized the power of networking. And so he set up sports networking groups and eventually leveraged all of this into becoming now one of the, the most well-known experts on relationship networking and has built a business of personal coaching, speaking, uh, being an author. He has a great podcast called The School of Greatness. And so Lewis is an example of being able to leverage a, a career that isn't marked by all of the necessary big accolades into a very f successful company. And then I turn your attention to kind of my final example, Devin Klein. So Devin Klein is a fascinating story played three years of minor league baseball in the San Francisco Giants organization. Devin never played above a uh, single A. And so once again, this is not a story where he had hundreds of thousands of followers on social of, of playing in the major leagues. But Devin had a passion for fitness, uh, being a former professional athlete. And so him and his eventual wife went on to found Burn Boot Camp that has over 20,000 members across the United States Devin also uh, just recently published his first book. And so he has used his platform to create a company and continue to, uh, to promote his own you know, brand. And so whether you're the guy that, that played one year of professional baseball or you're the pro bowler or the Olympian who's become one of the most iconic people is you all have the ability to leverage where you're at and to build a brand and to build a company. And so you might be also asking me, Eric, you know what, why should I do this? Why should I build a platform, especially if I don't have a desire um, to be posting on social media that, yeah, I hear you can make money on social, but I don't, you know, it's not worth my time. I'm not really a, a guy that engages on that or a gal that engages on it. Um, why should I even care about this stuff? And so I want to expand your thinking around the power of a platform, the power of a business. And so first and foremost is during your career, it's all about controlling your messaging. You know, right now, uh, I would ask the question of who controls what people think about you? Is it simply just the media? I want you to take a quick 30 second break from listening to this podcast Go on to Google, open up your browser, and I want you to type in your name. Go ahead and do it. What is it that you see? Who's controlling the message about you? For most of you, it's probably your stats page. Maybe there's a Wikipedia page. But if you go on to Google and you hit that news button, you are now allowing all the media and everybody else to start to tell your story. And so if it's simply nothing more than you being able to control your own messaging, explaining to people who you are as a person, who are you as a business person, who are you as a philanthropist, as an athlete, take control of your own messaging. Second, while you have the world's attention, it's all about building a platform in an audience that you can engage with. And this really becomes the power of relationships. And so even if you're not trying to monetize it today, this comes into the reality that every athlete's going to transition. Whether you're a pro bowler or a future Hall of Famer um, or just someone who, who had a short career is, there will be this transition. And there's a lot of life left and you're going to want to have opportunities to do something. And so by you building a platform today and actually engaging with an audience, which means you creating an email list, you 
not only having admirers or followers on maybe a social media account, but having actual contact information of those people that are interested in you is you can now set yourself up for a smooth transition. And so I use the example of, you know, my own case. When I first started in the financial business, what would have happened if I would have actually had an email list of true fans and an audience of thousands of people? Would it have been a little bit easier for me to get a job, um, to start uh, bringing on clients, you know? And so while people want to engage with you and to know you, it's all about relationships. And so I think back to the episode we had with Justin Blaine of Athletes Touch talking about the power of networking or the episode with Ryan Neese who played seven years in the NFL and wrote handwritten notes to all the sweet holders is when you're an athlete, you can get to anyone. And I know that this is nothing new, but the question becomes not only can you get to anyone, but how do you cultivate relationships with them? And so, you know, first clarify your message. Second, start to build an audience and a platform where you can actually engage with your audience. Third is the financial freedom. Make no mistake about it. For most athletes and most individuals, one of the biggest goals is what we call financial freedom, meaning how much money do you need when your athletic career is over that you never have to worry about working again? This is something called mailbox money or what you may have heard of called passive income is that can you start to generate enough money that doesn't require you to get up out of bed and go to work and to do things. And so from a financial standpoint, as you start to build a platform, uh, both online and, and social, if that's part of it, is you can start to generate bigger endorsement income. You can start to generate you know, digital products and speaking opportunities and, and areas that are not predicated on how you perform on the field, but really becomes passive income for you off the field. And so, you know, a big thing on this is during your career is, is we're starting to see the shift from endorsement income is, you know, one of my favorite videos that I've seen was put out actually by a, our most recent guest, Taylor Holiday over at Common Thread Collective. They put out a, a, a video called um, Who's More Famous, uh, Clayton Kershaw or Amanda Stanton? And very candidly, I didn't even know who Amanda was until I watched this video and she was um, – a contestant on The Bachelor, you know, and, and I know who Clayton is. But what they really started to argue is, is brands, at the end of the day, when they align themselves with, with athletes, the ultimate reason is because they believe that you're going to generate revenue for that company. Um, it's not because you're the best athlete. It's because they believe you have a platform that can help them make money. But we've seen this transition away from the athlete to uh, the musician the influencer, the entertainer, and a few that come to mind is we've seen Under Armour strike a deal with ASAP Rocky, uh, the rapper. We've seen New Balance do the same thing with Chance, the rapper. And probably the most notable or famous is Adidas striking a deal with uh, Kendall Jenner, who clearly is not an athlete. And so when you look at it and go, what can you bring to the table for endor endorsement companies? Not only is it, um, hey, I'm on the field every Sunday or I pitch every five days, but look at my audience, look at my engagement. Here's how I can be a great partner to help you make money. And so from a financial standpoint, there's a huge incentive for you guys to start to build a brand and a company today. Fourth, it's investment opportunities. The reality is, is that if you want to have the best deal flow, meaning the opportunity to get in the next Facebook and Snapchat and XYZ company, a large part of it comes as what is the value that you're bringing beyond money? I think back to the episode with Ryan Neese, the former football player who's the managing director of Next Play Capital, a venture capital fund, is as Ryan said, the most successful venture capital funds are oversubscribed, meaning that if they're raising $50 million, they have $200 million of money that's trying to get into their deal. And so they start to ask the question, what do you have beyond money? And so as an athlete, yes, you have the intellectual capital or the know-how of sports, but you start to become much more attractive if you can come into a company and say, hey, not only do I have money, but I have a platform that I can actually help grow uh, your company's brand through 
my online platform and through my social following. And so maybe instead of them asking for $100,000 for, you know, 5% of the company, you get that 5% of the company for 50 grand and the agreement to be able to push it out on social. So you get better access and you get better term deals based off of your platform. And fifth, and, and this is really what I love, is let, let's put the money aside. Let, let's say it's not about growing your wealth because maybe you've reached that standpoint. You've reached your financial freedom, your, your capital number. Um, it's all about impact. It's the reason that we talk to our clients who have more money than they'll ever need of why do you continue to invest? And it really becomes about legacy and impact, meaning that you know, if you can continue to grow your financial capital or your platform or your reach, you can now start to either partner with certain nonprofits or causes or even start your own foundation. And you can raise awareness to the issues that need to be addressed in the world to make it a better place for all people. Or you can actually start to raise capital. And I think the best example of this is we saw J.J. Watt during Hurricane, or Hurricane Harvey raised $37 million. And so JJ didn't use that for his own financial gain. He simply took to his platform and made a huge impact and a difference in people's lives of, of, of the Houston area. And so, you know, it's not just about making money, it's about making an impact. And then lastly, and this has kind of been intertwined throughout all of these is, it's that transition, it's post-career opportunities. And so whether it's you wanting to be a broadcaster you know, they now look at beyond you being a good athlete, do you have a audience that's going to pay attention to you, whether it's getting your first job um, or, you know, leveraging it into a political career is when you transition out, the best opportunity you're going to have is to go to your network, which if you haven't cultivated that and built that, you're now left to kind of competing against everybody else with no real advantage. And so, those are the reasons that I think you should really consider starting to A, think about yourself as a business, the different opportunities that you have if you do decide to go down that path. And then I want to leave you with very quickly, so you say, all right, Eric, you've convinced me that I should be a business owner. You convinced me that I should build a platform. Where do I start? And the short answer is not just start putting sporadic stuff out on social media goes back to what we were talking about, having clarity of vision. What is it that you're trying to accomplish? And so the first resource I'd point you towards is the episode I did with Kyle Mock, the founder of Athletes Brand. And Kyle has a whole process that he talks about of defining what's your legacy? Who are you? What are you trying to be known for? What are you trying to accomplish? And making sure that we're, we're aiming in the right direction with our platform. And so Visit Kyle's website, athletesbrand.com, or his personal website. Uh, he's got some great resources on how to start to ask those questions. The second area that I would uh, point you to is the book called Platform by Michael Hyatt. And I'm going to put all of these resources in the show notes so that you guys can access them. But Michael Hyatt was the CEO of a big name publishing company and now is known as uh, your virtual mentor and has really built a business online. And, and Michael's book literally lays out kind of A to Z how you can start the process of building a brand. And then for what we call the gasoline on the fire is there is no doubt the power of social media today is huge. Um, and there's nobody better than Gary Vaynerchuk. And so Gary V is a name that most of you guys probably are aware of, his latest book called Crushing It. But two specific links I'm going to put in the show notes is the first one is um, one of my favorites is how athletes should use social media to build their brands. He kind of lays it out step by step, which I think is really powerful. It's all about engagement. And then his last one, which I'll leave you with is stop asking me about your personal brand and start doing some work. And so this is what I'll leave you with is this is not easy. No successful business, like no successful professional career just happens overnight. And so I would really implore you is, is if you're going to make this commitment, it's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take a lot of intentionality, but you guys have great resources around you. And so uh, I encourage you, if this has fired you up, reach out to us. You can email me at eric at 
athleteceo.com or go to our website, athleteceo.com and subscribe and, and we can follow up with you. Or reach out to your agent, reach out to your financial advisor um, and start to ask them, how can you start to build this and put these things into place? And so um, really enjoy spending a few moments with you. I'm excited for the future episodes of where we're going. We've got a lot of new things that are going to be dropping on the Athlete CEO podcast. And so um, love spending some time with you. If you guys have enjoyed this show or any of the other ones, I'd love for you guys to head over to iTunes and leave a review. Um, it's really important for us to be able to get feedback and, and to know that we're addressing the things that are important to our audience. And so um, really appreciate you guys and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Athlete CEO Podcast. Mm-hmm.